All right. Vote review on Seoul on Genji. Um, just a heads up. Next time when you want to have vote done and you post it in the uh, channel, if you can give me a little bit of information regarding one, your in-game battle tag, I'm assuming you're drained because that's the only Genji luckily in this code at the moment. Um, and who you want help on, um, what rank you're in, what platform you're on, it just helps to really understand um, not only like where you're at, but your limitations as well if you're on a controller. Obviously for Genji, it's going to be harder to do like the 180 shuriken combinations. So um, try and give as much detail as you can and then I'll make my life easier and I appreciate it. But let's get into the VOD and we'll see what we're working with and see what the areas of improvement are for you to uh, look, focus on. Okay. Uh, to talk a little bit about Genji to start off. Um, just because right off the bat, that was bad. Um, <laughs> don't mean to be harsh about it, but this will lose you games doing this constantly. So Genji is a flank slash assassin style DPS, right? Which means you're going to spend the entire game deleting Zenyatta absolutely getting rid of him or annoying the mercy slash choosing I guess the whole time you're going to be choosing between whether to go on the zen and drag the mercy to support him and that'll open up avenues for your soldier to kill the pharaoh or you're going to be focusing on the ash and focusing the mercy to peel for her and then opening up opportunities for yourself to go on that. Or dealing with the Ash in general will just open up your support, uh, your uh, your honor and your soldier to be able to take a more favorable duel with the Pharah. And again, the Mercy will be appealing. Another option is to just go for the Mercy and cut out the middleman. But she's more than likely going to be paired next to one of these two. And if she's there, she's also just going to get Harmony Orb when you dive her. So she's going to be pretty unkillable as well as Mercy's just a highly mobile hero with a jet fighter mechanics. It's quite difficult to lock her down. But nonetheless, that's what we're going to be looking for in this game. I don't want to ever see you shooting the tank. I don't really want to see you trying to duel the Pharah because it's not your job. And you can do other things easier and get more value easier. You know, sometimes you may need to do that. Uh, but... I'm not even going to talk about the situations where that could be applicable because they're so niche that it's going to be rare to come across them. But so that is your target focus. You're going to do this. You're going to accomplish this by playing around and utilizing parts of Genji's kit, namely his mobility. His mobility, if I can uh, draw decently well today stems from a few things one dash plus the dash reset two wall climb and three double jump Ex excuse my horrendous handwriting all right but mobility for genji comes from his dash his dash reset when he gets a kill his wall climb and his double jump and the great thing about these two things is that they don't have cooldowns right like dash comes and goes obviously you can reset it if you get a kill that's relying on something these it's the second you touch the ground again right which means you can constantly be using them there's no like uh wave of value that you have to wait for to be able to do them you can be doing them in your lowest peaks um your lowest peaks your lowest moments of value right that means that we can abuse the ability to be able to just quickly go up onto this high ground without having to walk underneath and around the stairs and back up like other heroes it also means that we can climb over this choke we can uh climb up this wall and then out here to get through the choke easier we can play around the top of this statue and get height to duel with the pharaoh if we needed to uh, and likewise we can just climb up this wall to get to this window if anyone was sitting here slash it can be a great way for us to 
go in, do some damage on the Zen, and then get out. So leveraging that mobility to not only get onto your targets, but also get away from them, right? Like Ash is going to coach gun to the high. You can just wall climb or double jump to the high. You can also dash, but we want to save our dashes as a tool to be able to go more aggressive, confirm kills, or get out rather than just to close the gap. Uh, preferably, preferably. It's not always ideal, but that's something off the bat. Just some Genji uh, fundamentals, let's say. The reason I bring this up is we instantly walk out here and then throw Deflect. Now, why is that bad? Because Deflect is an 8 second cooldown, which unless he unloads a 5 orb back onto himself, and you not only is it hard for him to hit 5 orbs on you, for you to then reflect them and hit all of them on him, and then for your team to follow up on that and him to not get rezzed, it's incredibly rare, right? It's it's not going to happen. It's it's unlikely. The few times where it happens, that's great. Wonderful. But is it really worth it? No. And it's going to develop a bad habit. So just try to stay away from doing the very plat rank Genji thing of just walking into choke using deflect. Because that's eight seconds now where if your team goes in, you are just going to have way less value on the fight because you're not going to be able to play as aggressively because you won't have deflect to get you out of the situation. So we're gonna want we're gonna monitor this for the rest of the game. Obviously, you're not gonna change anything because this is this what has already happened. But we're gonna look at more examples of that because that is just an instant red flag for Genji players. This is good, we're looking for an off angle, I like it. Couldn't quite confirm the kill. Oh, we did confirm the kill, nice. But you see what I was talking about, how that was quite difficult. I think Anna or your soldier must have hit a shot on her to get her that low that that right click finish her off. Well done for hitting the shot, to be fair. Um, but you can see how that is already a good indicator that it's going to be quite difficult to kill the Mercy. Um, and the idea is that while it may have worked there, the theory is still solid in that the better the mercy, the less likely that is to happen. And the higher you climb, yes, you're going to climb a skill, but so are the mercies. And it shouldn't happen. So we don't want to rely on it and we don't want to go into games thinking this is what worked in the past. I'm going to do it again because it most likely won't. Okay. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I think off the last spot I watched of you, your gold and on console? That could be wrong, but that's what I remember. Although you're flicking quite well. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to treat it as such anyway, for the purpose of this spot. If you're not, I apologize, but... Okay. So, so, we get this kill on the Mercy, which is good. This dash is a little in for how much damage you've taken, how much damage she's taken, and where you are. But it's not the end of the world because you're dashing out as well at the same time, right? Like, this is sort of on the way out anyway. We're doing some damage. Yeah, she took some damage from something. I'm not sure what it was. But then you just nick her foot, get the kill. Good. Now, chill. A lot of Genji players see that and then they're like, Alright, go, go, go. And we get a decent hit on the Pharah. But then we miss our second one, which is what stops us from killing her, I think. And now we're in, we're trying to find the Pharaoh, we're trying to get the kill. 29 health. And luckily there's a Moira Orb there to bail us out. But you have your Deflect, you get booped in, which is unlucky. 
but like this is bad again right now right we don't have deflect we're half on hp and we're playing outside of our supports los or about to be our is pushed up a bit but i assumed our moira ash was likely to be on point to be honest um so this is risky right you got to be really careful i don't want to say it's bad because you know i'm all for you know play aggressively and, and limit test and and figure it all out but just be careful because if you feed and die right here you guys still haven't even gotten a tick yet it's still a losable fight Very nice. Very good. And spray on him. I like it, I like it. Finish him off too. And spray again. Very good. That Mercy's just gonna feed and die. Okay. Alright, well. You ain't farming them. I just want to note, after we kill the Mercy, I'm assuming there's some sort of match chat going on here, or maybe recording a clip for it, I don't know. Now you're back, now go, go be proactive. We can be setting up well in advance, we're, we're in support of our Ana, we know our Ana's pushed up with us, we know our Moira plays aggressively anyway. We can sit up here and deny this Pharah this high ground. I know I said I didn't want you like focusing the Pharah, but if you're denying, if you're taking a 1v1 with her and just sort of like trading damage, this is absolutely a favorable position to do it in. If she's going to play above this high ground and give you this wall to climb on for free and get up close and personal to her, absolutely abuse it. Um, if she wasn't here, you know, you can always be like taking an angle here or pushing up to here and spamming shurikens down this choke as they walk back, you know. Be, be proactive, have, have a high APM because that's definitely a, um, a difference maker in lower ELO is just thinking about all right, where do I need to be for the next team fight. The more if messes up a fade, we punish her, we dash out, very good. Nice, I like it, I like it. There's a little bit of micro execution there that could have been better obviously in terms of how much damage we took from the Rhine and, and hitting our shots but hey that was good. We don't care about the micro. As much as the macro, I should say. I don't I don't really mind if you pull it off or not. I'm more worried about the why we're doing certain things and and what we're thinking about doing. Pharah's up there. I'm assuming we couldn't see her HP, that's why we didn't just dash on her. You tried to get a lower again before you committed to it, I think. Um, a little bit of just abusing your um, your abilities, you know. We don't have to sit on the on the floors trying to shoot the ferret. We can be wall climbing up to her. We can be, you know, a little bit of a count, a bit of a match up sort of um, uh, knowledge, I guess, in terms of you know, if a Baptiste player will know and an Ash player will know if a ferret is trying to pressure you out, trying to push you best thing you can do is coach gun or exo boot into the air because it's incredibly difficult for Farah to hit direct shots so anytime you can abuse that through double jump or through dash or through wall climb um, absolutely do it we're getting close to blade here our honor's about 20 percent if we're going to try for nano blade i like this i like that we're going on the far flank now be careful, I like that we're running around the outskirts of the maps, this is good, around the edges, but again, think about leveraging Genji's abilities, his vertical mobility, he's not, he's not horizontally mobile, he is through dash, but dash can go omnidirectional, right, it can go straight up in the air. If dash can go up in the air, you can wall climb upwards, you can double jump upwards, he is great at abusing height. And if you can position above your enemies, it makes it incredibly difficult for them to hit their shots. So what I'd like you to have done here is maybe throw some shurikens, maybe just play a distance. If your team's going in, 
Then we can wall climb up to here, do the same thing. Maybe we can find a pick on the Ana. If nothing else, we're going to force her out. That's forcing her to cut LOS from her Ryan or just drop from the position to keep it. And that's getting value, right? You're denying this area. Um, and then maybe you can just like spam out the Ryan, build blade, and then look for a blade towards when the cart gets a bit closer. You know, there's options here. I, I'm, I'm not sure if you're going to end up dying here, but the point is that um, from this position, if you want to drop on them and do damage and then dash away, you can. If you want to dash on them, do some damage and then wall climb away, you can. If you want to sort of play it a bit slower, then like do some damage, do some damage, and then it doesn't look like you're going to get anything, then you can deflect until you get uh, back around a corner. You know, that it's very easy to cut LOS, is basically what I'm saying. Your dash in here is going to leave you way out in the open, and you invest a dash to do it. Nated as well. The closest wall you can cut to is here, and that's a corner like that. So, one, two, three people still in LOS of you still can damage you. One of them, I think, is a Moira. M. Caston, yeah, the one in front of you is a Moira. So you can't even use your only other cooldown deflect to survive through this. So be careful about where you go in, because you also need to get out or confirm the kill. Either need a, if if you're investing dash to get in, and someone doesn't die, you need to be able to get to A or B or C without dash, with just deflect slash wall climb slash double jump. And that's what I mean by abusing Genji's vertical mobility. Just a couple of rogue fire strikes on the code. Deflecting, we're anted, we're just getting... Yeah, and we, and we get more red, right? So the same thing would have happened if we had it just positioned uh, to this wall on our right here. Luckily a soldier is gonna get nanoed. Somebody got nanoed. Yeah, soldier got nanoed. And if nothing else, your Ana is getting a little bit worried that about giving you a nano. Knowing Ana players. She's getting worried about the fact that you know, she's she's contemplating is he a good Genji? Does it does he deserve nano for the nano blade? That's just how honest thing. I, I, as an honor player myself, I am guilty of the same thing. What I'm going to predict you're going to do now is go way too early. I hope I'm wrong. Maybe this coalescence will persuade you not to. You might wait until it's gone and then decide to blade, but either way, especially when you're not going to have a nano, be very careful about using blade too early. Oh no, unlucky. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. They had used nade, they had used fire strikes, they'd used helix, they'd used alt and orb. So, again, pretty good timing. I'm actually impressed. And I, had, I like your blade mechanics too, that was pretty clean. Um, yeah, I just wanted to note that you should be careful about, even with a nano blade, you should be careful about using it first because you just demand all their attention and all their resources and it, it just, nine times out of ten, it ends up very bad. But this is a really one-sided code at the moment. I'm going to be surprised. 23 minutes, wow. So you must get stuck here a bit. Gotta clean up, we don't clean up. Right, same sort of thing, okay. Same sort of thing as the end of the, the second checkpoint. We're using dash. I'll use, uh, what color is gonna be? I guess green will stand out a bit. Um, we're using dash to get in. Then we're, so, A to B. 
and I'm assuming the target was Moira, to be fair. Um, and then it just seemed like you weren't going to be able to get that, so then you turned your attention towards the soldier. Um, let's say you are a bit more successful on um, going on this Moira. Unless you confirm a kill, you're stuck. And even if you do confirm a kill, where are you going to dash to? Like, up window? Back here to cut LOS? Again, all you're cutting LOS of is soldier, right? Everyone else on the team can see you. So, be really careful. Because you could have just... I know you were rushing to get into the fight, and, like, you felt like you needed to be in. And, to be honest, that's that's a problem because you died at the end of the last fight, not because your Arissa's going in or anything, like... We died at the end of last fight. This, we we should have uh, survived and not and not been so uh, gung ho, I guess. But maybe you walk top and then you just you let yourself fall. You double jump and then you shuriken dash melee shuriken. Soldier's probably dead, right? He's not that great based on the jewel that you guys had before. You missed a lot of his shots. Either that or we just you know hesitate for a second. Think about who the best. Uh, person to go on is if we uh, go back to before you dash I'd even say I mean just looking at this I, I, I'm not even not gonna say even because I, I just would say um, dashing through that when they were all super low like maybe this ash dies before she gets nano she gets bubble, get pulled in. I think you're just out of range. Uh, actually, I mean, you might get there. You get there in a second anyway. If you dash through that, you get, maybe you get the kill on Ash, but you either get, you keep her low, slash keep the Yana low, and you dash into here, and then you're playing in here. And when I'm sitting here, who can see me? I've cut a Lois of Soldier, I've cut a Lois of Moira, I've cut a Lois of Ash. I'm shooting the Ana. And I don't really care about the Zaya because she's probably having a 1v1 with the tank, right? So, amazing position because we can cut LOS of the enemy team. And to the point where the only person who can see us and shoot us is the person that we are also shooting. So there is an equal balance of pressure going out between you and your target. So dashing somewhere like here, really great, right? Dashing somewhere, let's say they were more positioned on boxes. If we can dash up here, we can wall climb away, we can cut LOS again by doing this, right? And then maybe Soldier can see us, but maybe then we just drop back here. And the Zaya even turns to peel for you for a bit, but then doesn't even need to, and I think you get headshot by the Ash or something. Don't deflect. No! <laughs> Don't deflect. Don't stand in front of the team and deflect. Five seconds now where we could have been, you know. If the thing, it's not the deflect is a great ability at like deflecting damage into people and that you can't go in without it. It's the fact that you it makes it incredibly difficult to survive without it. So you can't go and take this position right now. And you can't be pressuring this team. And then the Moira can't respond and be like, oh, there's a Genji up there. I'm going to try and beam him because Moira count as Genji, supposedly. And the Zaya is then all of a sudden not getting healing. These are like small, really small things. They might seem totally like, ah, uh, how much does that really matter? I promise you they do. I promise you they do. And they will matter more and more higher up because players understand the game to a higher level. And it won't be that they will realize that you're not actually a threat up there. It's that they will already be there and they'll be pressuring you before you've gotten a chance to pressure them. So this is good, right? We're taking this position. 
but they're already backed up, right? So now we don't have access to the back line from this position. So this position is worth less, not worthless. It just isn't worth as much as it was a minute ago. And again, dashing in, we deflect, our deflect runs out, we get bailed out by the Coalescence. We dash in again, we don't have deflect, but the fight was already won, so it's whatever. Okay, I've got a couple more minutes, I'm going to take a quick look over the defense, but it seems like we know what the crux of the, or like, what we can be working on now. It seems like we know what we can take away from this, which is the dashing into open areas, thinking about your engages, essentially. I think last time, the feedback I gave you was that you weren't playing enough in the other lanes and you weren't looking for your own angle. I can see that you've clearly worked on that and fixed that. That's great, and it's giving us opportunities. And now with these opportunities, we can see the engages. We can see what we need to fix up uh, in relation to them. I'll just go back a bit. <laughs> okay. Again, could get a cool clip. I don't mind it because you're not going to need deflect in the next like five seconds or whatever. So it's whatever. But obviously, be aware of your surroundings. Okay. Don't be trading, don't be shooting tank, firstly. The second, he is out trading your damage. Which means it's absolutely not worth you doing right now. Not only are you shooting shields, so you're not actually charging your ult, but he is out spamming you because that, that is what Sigma is good at. We're going to burn deflect again. And we're going to get forced out. And now Zarya is alone. We're waiting for heals. The Widow is half. I don't know where she is. She's still up top. So she's too far away, right? Which makes it scary to play out in the open. I get that. We're looking for it again. She misses a shot. Whoa. Nice. Dodge. Just get damaged. Okay, I will put this. I don't know if. No, it doesn't look like that's what you're doing. Okay. What does this position do for you? In terms of if we quickly go back to our Genji fundamentals, I want to be on the back line, pressuring who? Namely, Baptiste, right? He's the easier one to pressure. If nothing else, we force out Lamp to use on himself, then we get out. All right? Hanzo's a little scary because he's Hanzo, he can just delete us from the game. And um, Moira is also a little scary to duel. We have enough burst potential that we can kill a Moira if we're good enough. Um, and it, it's not a counter like people think, because it's so, such a slow tick over time that Genji can just leave or cut LOS. But um, I get that it might put a bit of pressure on you. Widow's in Narnia, so she's not an option. And we don't care about the tank, so realistically we're focused on Bat. And we can go take a duel with a Hanzo if he is threatening our team, but we're not going to actively push and play super aggressively into him um, if we don't have to, like for no reason. I don't think. Not ahead of the Baptiste anyway. He'd be my number two if the Baptiste was dead or I couldn't get to him. But we need to be looking for the Baptiste. So, leveraging our vertical mobility. We don't want to be around here, obviously, because they have a Widow. We don't want to be jumping over the wall and peeking and getting sniped. Because that just won't end up well. But what we can do is play in here. Can we not tickle this BAP and then use our double jump to get up here and then 
sit here to keep LOS of our honor or even wall climb up here to get LOS of our honor. You know, think about opening up the map, think about positions that you can take on the map that force them to deal with you. Because at the moment, you're getting dealt with by the Sigma throwing an occasional primary fire to the right side of the choke instead of to the left. Slash, you can also just bide your time, you know? Like, if, you know, there's no opportunities presenting themselves to you, then, and you, there's no one you can go on, then by all means shoot the tank. But do it by spamming him with your primary fire from a range where he's not damaging you, right? Like, make the trade worth it. Don't be shooting a shield, find an angle where he either is, it's costing him to dedicate shield to you, or um, he can't shield you, so you're actually getting ult charge. We're coming up on 30 minutes though, so we'll wrap it up. And I guess we'll talk about this death, because <laughs> uh, this looks like it's probably where they start winning. Um, We just took a Hanzo bullet coming in. We took a bunch of damage because we dashed from the front line. Like, yeah. That's all it that is. Let's, if we wanna, if we wanna do a little bit of detective work, we'll have a look. If you want to really break down where you died, dashing from the front line, it's because why were we at the front line? Why were we not on an off angle? Why were we not ready to just maybe wall climb over the wall and then dash from a different angle? Slash spam and then dash to confirm a kill rather than dash first. It's because we were taking a duel outside of our effective range against an echo and we got forced out. So. On the defense, more so than the attack. It seems like on the attack you go looking for the right thing to do, but when you're on defense and you're sort of unsure of what you should be doing, it seems like you seem to default into bad habits and and take jewels that don't really uh, suit your style. So, um, yeah, I think we know what we need to work on, which is just thinking about your engages. So when we're looking to engage on a particular zone. Let's use the Zen at the start as an example because that'll be easy. Um, if you're trying to go on the Zen here, it's how do I get from, let's say, A to B without having to use uh, Dash? Like how do I close the distance to this guy? while not wasting abilities like having to use deflect to get to this corner or dashing from this corner to the target and then how do i get out do i wall climb up here do i dash up to this window do i dash up to this high ground do i just dash out you know think about spaces where you're going to get out because right now dashing anywhere sort of in that bubble like in this area that's that's about as tough as it gets because you don't like anywhere here is like you can sort of dance around this phone booth for a bit anywhere from like point to the wall is like okay we can probably just get out this way anywhere from like this point onwards is like we can probably just get out this way slash go back through hotel that's when you start to get into these areas then it becomes a bit dicey and then refine your um refine your reflect usage seems like we should be going okay walk in on the zen like let's say we go through a hotel throw a shuriken uh dash on him turn around combo melee and then you either get the kill and you can and that's cool because you'll have dash to get out and then you can just dash out or you can go further in depending on what the situation demands or we're going to deflect double jump 
and then quickly turn around and more climb out of here or we're going to deflect until we get to here and then walk out underneath or wall climb and double jump to get onto the high and cut it lower. So think about your engages. Think about using your deflect better and think about what be proactive, I guess, because on defense it was the same thing. When we weren't being proactive and thinking about who should I be shooting, we were just shooting random people like the Sig and the Echo and there's things that we can be doing better pressuring the zen slash bap and being an assassin so hope this helps let me know if anything doesn't make sense and uh yeah good luck with all your games